So, well, welcome to um, CEO Chick Chat with Anna Post. Thank you. Anna is the great, great granddaughter of Emily Post. Mm -hmm. And um, how many people are familiar with the Emily Post books? Remember seeing it in your house? Good. We live in Washington, D.C., which is one of the diplomatic headquarters of the world. Oh, it's yes. a very transient region. Lots of military here. And I am the child of a Navy captain. And that was one of the hallmark books. I think it was the Betty Crocker cookbook and the Emily Post book were the two books <laughs> always in my life I remember seeing the most, which mm -hmm. were the guide to all things that you do. So certainly a part of our lives. Fine. So I imagine as mm -hmm. the great-great-granddaughter, this is my image of you when growing mm -hmm. up, is that you live on Park Avenue, mm -hmm. that you have a beautifully immaculate house, that oh, when yes. you are summoned to summit, <laughs> to supper, it's white tablecloths and mm -hmm. linens, it is the finest silver, the children are immaculately dressed, and it's a very formal affair. Is that the right picture? Oh, yes. You should all take that away. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. I grew up in Vermont uh, in a three-bedroom house, uh, surrounded by farms. Um, the cows would get out once a year and be in the yard, uh, not ours, but the neighbors. And um, dinner was at 6 o'clock when my dad would get home from work, and um, it was at our table. Uh, it was always set, but it might not have had a tablecloth on it. Um, and we were very normal kids. We learned manners just, I think, like many of you did. Um, you know, not to put your elbows on the table while you're actually eating. It's okay to have them there otherwise. But the, uh, you know, not to blow too loudly on your soup to say please and thank you. But beyond that, it wasn't a hushed veil of silence around the dining room table. <laughs> no. Well, that's good. That's reassuring. So yes. it sounds like you incorporated normal life. Yes, in, very much in your so. Home. So what do you remember about your great great grandmother? I mean, that's that is such. Were you more aware of who she was now or when you were growing up? What, what was her presence in your life growing up? Um, not very present. The book did not sit on display on the table as we ate. Um, it wasn't held over my head, literally or figuratively, uh, when I was growing up. I, was, I became more aware of her um, probably in my teenage years when I was in high school. Um, the business also started picking up then. It was the mid-90s, and we really revamped. Um, so there was more of a presence, mostly because of... Uh, the, the involvement of my family, my immediate generation of family members just above me, in it, more so because of that than anything else. Um, I didn't get to know Emily. She died in 1960, uh, and so there was a little bit of a gap. My dad knew her. My aunts and uncles all knew her. She had a wonderful sense of humor. I've seen some videos, and I've heard lots of great stories. Um, I don't think she suffered fools easily, but she was not a strict, stern, humorless woman at all. Very much the opposite. Very practical very very good sense of humor. We want to come back through our journey and discuss sure. how this became a business yeah. and what you're doing but I want to understand a little bit about you. Sure. So you were born in Vermont, is that where you were born? Yes, that's correct. I was born in Vermont and uh, most of my family had been from the New York area so I'm, I'm definitely familiar with it. We traveled between the two but born and raised in Vermont there was no cable television. My world was about six square miles and that was it. So how many siblings did you have? I have one younger sister. One younger sister. So mm -hmm. there's two girls in your family. Mm -hmm. And how did, tell me about your parents. What did they do and what were they like? Uh, my parents were, uh, they moved from New York up to Vermont in the early 70s. And my dad had been a painter. He had his MFA from Pratt. Um, and my mom was working in education. She was a teacher. And around the time that I was born, a little bit after, my dad got into graphic design, started his own business, which merged from graphic design and typesetting into advertising, then into marketing and public relations, um, branding strategy from there, which has been tremendous help when he trans uh, excuse me, transitioned um, up into Emily Post. So big sort of graphic design sort of side to his education, which trickled down to me as well. Interesting. So, are you the oldest or the youngest? I'm the oldest. You're the oldest. Yep. Okay. I find that really common. A lot of times we ask the question out there if, of the number of women who are involved with us who are CEOs, and the majority of which are always the firstborn. Really? So, it's always an interesting okay. um, study, a quick study. I don't know what, what the survey really tells you, but... Um, I wonder what that means. I just think the oldest <laughs> one's bossy. I think that's what it means. Great. Bossiness. <laughs> bossy um, boots. That's me. Bossy boots. Is that what they called you? <laughs> oh, no, not me. That's just the phrase you hear a lot for it. <laughs> So, um, what were your interests when you were growing up? I mean, what were you doing? Describe your life living in Vermont. And it was rural, I yep, take it. Yeah, it was rural. Um, Burlington's a small city, which is nearby. Um, you know, we would ski in the winter, which was very fun. There were small ski hills. Uh, and it was also a place where, um, 
you know, you were outside a lot, doing things, you know, running around in the woods, that kind of thing. Um, but I also love to read. I spent a lot of time reading as a kid. I still love to read now, although I don't have as much time for it. Um, but I, I had my nose in a book quite a lot. Um, <clears throat> so were you on a farm or just you were surrounded by farms? Surrounded by farms. No, <laughs> we had three sheep in the summers. Very good friend of my mom um, had a, a sheep farm. Um, I don't remember what the husband did. He was in professional life, but she had a, a sheep farm. It was a beautiful old Vermont farmhouse with the barn and the rolling hills and everything. And they would um, sort of loan out some of the sheep over the summer that they couldn't all pasture. And my dad called them the lawn boys, and he would stake them out in the areas where he wanted to trim down the brush and the foliage, but he couldn't get the lawnmower in through, the riding lawnmower. And so they were there, and then you know we would have we would have lamb throughout the year. So, okay, so <laughs> that was that was a little dicey as a kid. My <laughs> sister, I think, still doesn't eat lamb to this day. <laughs> yeah. So they were your lawn mower and your dinner. Yes, no. eventually, not yeah. all at the same time, but we got there. Yeah. All right. Okay. That's, okay, I got to work on that one a little bit. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Especially living here in Washington D.C., you don't see. Can you imagine if everybody had sheep in their yard, and then come over and eat my lawn mower? You know, mm. it'd be a little, little peculiar. That would be a little different here. Yeah. Um, so as you're growing up um, mm -hmm. and you're in school, were you thinking, this is home, this is where I'm going to stay, what I'm going to be in arts? What did mm -hmm. you see your vision when you were growing up? Um, I knew that it, I was pretty sure I would go to boarding school. Most of the people in my family had. It was just very common on my mom's side and my dad's side um, to go to boarding school. I went to one in Massachusetts. So I was very, very familiar with the idea of going away from home. I chose to come back back to Vermont for college, um, not so much to be at home, but I liked the school. Um, I had lived abroad as well at one point, and I felt very comfortable. Um, no, excuse me, actually, I hadn't done that yet, but I was planning to. I was planning to at the time. Um, and so I felt comfortable coming back, having had a lot of exposure. Boarding school has kids from all over the world. Um, so I felt, I felt good about that when I was coming back. What was the boarding school you went to? I went to Phillips Academy, which is in Andover. Most people know it as Andover. It's in Massachusetts. So boy, girl, and... Mm -hmm. Yep, it was co-ed. Nice. Yep, pretty liberal. We didn't have a dress code. We were, we were fairly normal kids as far as you can go in loco parentis when the school is your parent, so to speak. So. How many years did you go to boarding school? I was there for three years. Three years. Mm -hmm. so, so now you go through boarding school. So what kind of student were you? You... I was, a, <laughs> I was a pretty good. Uh, I was a pretty good student. Andover was hard. I'd been a big fish in a little pond in Vermont, and then I was a very little fish in a very big pond. And I think that was um, a very good education in humility. <laughs> uh, but no, I was a good student. I think it was a pretty good balance between, um, you know, everybody worked hard at Andover. You couldn't. You couldn't avoid it. And same thing in college. Um, but I also really had a lot of opportunity to explore. They had some great classes in things like architecture that you might not have got to have taken at, you know, the local high school back home. So I'm going to go back to something you just said. You were a big fish in a little pond when you were back home. Was that because of the family name, the legacy, just because you were a tall girl and you were cute? No, nope, I was a smarty pants. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> had nothing to do with the name or anything else. But, you know, Vermont, I, my school growing up, I had, there were maybe... 40, 50 kids to a grade, um, so it was very, very small. Uh, you knew everybody in not just your grade, but in the whole school. So it was a very intimate experience, yes. and then you moved out to the broader world. Yes. So you get through high school, mm -hmm. and you went to college, you said, in Vermont? Yes, what I was the University you of Vermont. Okay, and what did you study? Political science, although I took an awful lot of art. I was an art history um, major for a while. No, excuse me. I was a studio art major for a while. I did graduate with a um, minor in art history. If you could combine the two, I would have a major, but they don't let you do that, so they keep them separate. <laughs> so um, when you graduated, what, what were your aspirations as you're going through school? What did you see yourself doing? To be honest, as I was coming out of school, I didn't have a very set idea. It wasn't as though I'd wanted to be a banker or a lawyer, uh, a doctor, which has a very, very funneled career path. Um, I wasn't, I'll be honest, I wasn't entirely sure. I knew someday I wanted to do something with Emily Post, but both my parents encouraged me to do this, and I also wanted to myself go and work other places in the world first before that. Um, and it actually it happened very organically. Um, I had uh, a contact at the, the office of Senator Patrick Leahy here in D.C., who's the state senator for Vermont, um, and it really just happened organically. They said, well, why don't you, um, you know, interview for an intern position for the summer, it's short, you can just see if you like it. And I did, and it worked out, and I took a job for the year, and 
it all just sort of flowed from, from there. I think I was up for pretty much anything. I was just curious to see what was out there.